everybody. We're back with Nora O'Donnell of the CBS Evening News. It's a common playbook of authoritarians to try to denigrate and undermine the press so there can be no umpires, let's say, in the game, calling balls and strikes about what's true and what is not true. This president is no different. How, how is it disheartening to you to see the increased and continuous attacks on the press by this administration and their supporters? Well, the most important thing is the dissemination of facts. And so when there is a ta an attack on facts, an attack on important information that gives um, citizens the information they need to vote properly, uh, that concerns me. Uh, but you've greatly. been attacked personally by the president. Yes. And, and you interviewed a, a, a biomedical whistleblower in the administration who right. was worried about uh, the, the, their, the administration's dedication to giving all the uh, material and support needed to finding a vaccine. That's exactly right. We had the, we still have the only interview with Dr. Rick Bright, who is the head of BARDA, which is a government agency most people had never heard of before, but the one Congress just gave billions and billions of dollars to, which is at the forefront of funding, um, you know, who gets, who's going to have the needles for the syringes for the vaccine? Who's going to produce the glass bottles? Who's going to produce the masks that we all need? Who's going to replenish the national stockpile for PPEs? All of that. And Dr. Rick Bright uh, kept, kept saying to the White House, we need more masks. We need to do this. And he was fired for doing that. They, the White House says for leaking to the press. And so he became a whistleblower. He did our, his only interview with us. And I do think it's important to hold public officials accountable, whistleblowers hold an important role, and that was part of our interview. And because we did that interview and aired the concerns um, that this government official had about the way our taxpayer dollars are being spent, billions of them, to protect healthcare workers and citizens, the president at attacked me in a tweet. That goes with the territory of being a journalism. It doesn't bother me if I know we've got our facts straight and we can always stand on top of that as, as, as journalists. And it was a pretty lock solid story. Um, well, b besides all the journalism you're doing, you also have made time for something else. Can you tell me what's going on here? <laughs> okay. I, so, you know, it just so happened that I gave blood today. And so I should have actually, I st we should have started with this because the sticker I got said, be nice to me. So be nice to me, Stephen. You're always nice. I gave blood Perfect. today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I... Um, uh, you know, because of this public health role we were talking about, one of the stories, I mean, I read everything, was that there is a critical blood shortage in America. We wanted to do this a couple months ago, and I must say I got a little concerned just because it was really the height of the crisis in the Northeast region. But today I went and gave blood in order to, you know, help send a message that it is safe to give blood. For is that why that, there's a shortage? Because people are just afraid yes. to go into some place and have a needle stuck in their arm right now? Yeah, because COVID-19, they had to close a number of the blood donation centers. They're trying to ramp that back up because they like to have a five-day uh, supply of blood. They were down to a two-day supply of blood. So they're trying to encourage people to go back and give blood, that it is safe to do that. One person who gives blood can save three people's lives. So that was my... That was my thing to do today um, and try to sort of give back and, and try a, and send a message. And it was easy and I feel fine. I feel absolutely fine. And they gave me some apple juice and Cheez-Its at the end. What could be better? It's worth yeah. the trip right there. <laughs> Laura, thank you so much for being here. Hey, I'm so glad to see you. Take care. CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell airs live at 6.30 p.m. every weeknight. Nora O'Donnell, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by IDK. Thanks, Nora.